Hi, Patrick. How are you? All right. Doing okay. How about yourself? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. This is David Wildstein. I'm the editor of the New Jersey Globe. I'm speaking with Patrick Murray. He is one of the uh, uh, most outstanding pollsters in the country, uh, but he's a Jersey guy at heart and loves everything about New Jersey. Uh, so he did a poll from Monmouth University Polling Institute today uh, on the second district race between Amy Kennedy and Jeff Andrew. Patrick, if I could just ask you to just go through what you found there. Well, I mean, we found Kennedy ahead, uh, anywhere from five to seven points, depending on what kind of electorate shows up there. But I mean, that's a pretty narrow range for a pretty good uh, uh, size of, uh, you know, a lead. Uh, the thing, one of the, you know, you know that I wasn't sure what, what I was going to do, how many districts I was going to be able to do, because we're doing a lot of state races uh, because of the president, the Senate. That's what's up for grabs. Nobody thinks that the House of Representatives is up for grabs, but obviously I want to do something in my home state. So I asked, uh, asked my friends on Twitter, you know, which district in New Jersey would you want? New Jersey second, eked out the win. So everybody was happy with that. The only problem was I was already gonna do New Jersey second. Um, I just wanted to know what everybody else thought. Um, but one of the reasons why I wanted to do it was it was, it's one of those districts where I really don't have a good handle on what was going on there because of the party switch, because uh, Van Drew, uh, had won that from, you know, it was a Lobiondo district. So it was in Republican hands for many years, but Lobiondo was one of the more liberal, most liberal members of the House in the Republican caucus. Uh, he had all that labor support. So it's a district that I didn't know as much about as opposed to say the third or the seventh district, which I've polled many times before, have a pretty good understanding of what the electorate looks like there from year to year. Um, and the only polls we were seeing out of here were Democratic polls. So Democratic polls had Amy Kennedy with a, with a small lead, um, but we weren't seeing any Republican polls. What that usually means is that the Democrats feel that they're in better position than the Republicans. Uh, but I really wanted to confirm that to see uh, if that was true. And my own polling suggests that yes, in fact, Amy Kennedy does um, have a, a lead here. It's not, it's not an overwhelming lead. Um, it certainly is not in the bag for her, but uh, she is in the driver's seat right now. What does it mean when an incumbent four weeks away from an election, uh, in an election where people have already started to vote and, uh, you know, and, and many voters have already cast their ballots is still under 50%. What does that tell you? Yeah, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> that is not a good sign at all. Uh, you know, uh, Van Drew's favorability ratings are evenly split 40-40 with 20% uh, who still don't know enough about him. Although that's typical for a member of Congress. Uh, but the fact that he doesn't have uh, you know, a net positive on his ratings overall is, is really problematic for him. Uh, the, the key that, that I think we're looking at in this district is a number of things that um, you have some Republicans who are still not sure about him, about this party switch, despite the full-throated support of uh, President Trump and the uh, rally in Wildwood back in, uh, I think, uh, January, February, whenever that was. Uh, you know, he's still just, he's at 89% with, with Republicans uh, right now. So he doesn't have them fully locked in. Now they probably will lock in um, to the extent uh, that they vote a straight party ticket because they're supporting President Trump. But the other thing that I think happened here is that his party switch sparked a, a lot of Democratic voters to turn out um, and vehemently turn out, uh, and including independents who kind of lean one way or the other, leaning more Democratic in part because of his party switch. It just, just doesn't sit well with some people. Um, and I think there's enough that it really kind of um, helped you know, you know, bring out uh, the kind of vote for Amy Kennedy that we might not have seen otherwise if it was just any old uh, Republican incumbent running in this district. And this was a district that Donald Trump won by four points right. in 2016. Now you have him within the margin of error. You actually have Biden up three. Right. So at this point, in your opinion, you know, how 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 heavily does the presidential election weigh on Jeff Andrews ability to win reelection? It, it weighs a lot. I mean, there we have seen uh, in this media market, some uh, members of Congress were able to outrun the president, Republican members of Congress. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, Fitzpatrick out in the first district of Pennsylvania uh, in Bucks County there. Um, who's well, running well ahead in the polls and well ahead of how the president's doing in his district. 
uh, in New Jersey, uh, other than Chris Smith, that's, that's what you got to do uh, if you're going to win uh, as a Republican. Uh, you're going to have to outperform uh, President Trump. And, and here's why. I mean, this is an Obama, Obama, Trump district, right? So that went for Obama twice in 08 and 2012, and then went for Trump in 2016. What that means and what we're seeing with those kinds of districts is that these are districts where a significant proportion of the voters out there aren't tied to partisanship. They are, they are kind of anti-government voters, working class, don't feel that government has their back and are looking for change. They voted for change in 2008. They stuck with Obama in 2012 because uh, Romney was not an acceptable alternative. Then they went with uh, Trump in 2016 because he represented change. But those voters are still feeling that kind of, that's, that's still, that still sense of uneasiness again. And I think that's why we're seeing this as uh, this is not in the bag for the President Trump. And it looks like Joe Biden could uh, take this district back, as we're seeing in polling from other similar types of districts across the country. So knowing, and I, and I, know, I know I'm never able to pin you down on anything other than the data that is, is in front of you, but I'll, but I'll try. Is there, is there anything you can extrapolate from the numbers in the second district that could give you any, uh, any hint as to what might be playing out in the third district? between Andy Kim and David Richter? Yeah, I would say these numbers um, should be somewhat encouraging for Andy Kim. But again, there's enough of a, a unique quality that sets the second district apart because of Van Drew's party switch, that it's not clear whether the electorate that, you know, the electorate that brought Van Drew into, into the Congress in 2018, it looks different this year, but it's not, quite clear whether that's going to be the same in the, in the 28 in the excuse me in the third district in the third district we saw an electorate that looked a lot like a presidential electorate on both sides republican and democrat in the second district this time around we're seeing the potential for uh, for an electorate that looks more democratic than it was in 2018 um so you know so that's why we really can't you know bank on anything um you know the so andy kim not quite sure Yet I would say that probably based on a whole host of things, including uh, the Trump numbers there, that that would bode well for him. Uh, one, the one other competitive district in New Jersey where I think it does really help. Uh, these are number, numbers are indicative of uh, help for the incumbent is up in the seventh with Tom Malinowski mm -hmm. um, because of this anti-Trump sentiment that seems to be present in the second. We know it's always been bigger in the seventh was bigger in, in 2018. That's why they swung hard. And I can't imagine after Donald Trump's uh, spreading COVID in Bedminster last week, uh -huh. that it's gonna get any better anytime soon. So I think that, um, that probably bodes well for uh, Malinowski especially. And I saw, I saw Governor Murphy's numbers in your poll in the second district were, were, were fairly good. Uh, yep. certainly in comparison to uh, what we had seen or what, what all of us had been told about his, his approvals in South Jersey in 2019. Uh, does, this, does this make Governor Murphy a effective spokesman for Amy Kennedy, who he supported in the primary over the next few weeks? It doesn't hurt her, <laughs> is really what it boils down to. Um, if, if Governor Murphy's at 50% approval rating in the second district, which is where we have him right now among likely voters, then he's significantly above 50% statewide, which is good news for him because we weren't sure where he was. The last poll I think that came out on him was months ago, had him in the, in the 60s. I don't remember if it was my poll or somebody else's poll, but had him in the, like, the mid-60s in terms of approval rating. There was some talk that, that about internal polling showing that his number is dropping, which they may have. But they're certainly above 50% statewide based on these second district numbers. Now, I'm not talking about Murphy. Your question was about Amy Kennedy. Look, David, I mean, I haven't seen, and I said this two years ago and, and, and a year ago, is that, you know, Phil Murphy um, is going to be out there. He's going to lend his face to these campaigns, but he is not in any way, shape, or form going to uh, help voters make up their mind one way or the other about this federal election. This is about what's going on in Washington. This is about Donald Trump. Sure. Uh, this is about Jeff Andrew. Uh, it's not about Phil Murphy, uh, but Phil Murphy, 
because he's not unpopular there, uh, Amy Kennedy will invite him in, you know, be part of the campaign, uh, and he gets to take credit if she wins. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you one last question, because uh, I know you're busy and I, and I really do appreciate you coming on this, but was there any bad news for Amy Kennedy in this poll? No, we were looking at some things uh, so that would suggest that, you know, maybe the Kennedy name, that was one thing I was curious about because I really didn't even know how many people even knew that that, that name was related to the, um, the, the family of Massachusetts. Uh, and about two thirds of voters actually knew that. So that word has gotten out there. Uh, that she's married to a Kennedy, but the vast majority of voters say doesn't that's not part of the deal. Uh, you know, I think she, looking at her numbers, particularly in Atlanta County, where she's from, uh, really strong. So people see her as somebody who understands South Jersey um, just as well as said Jeff Andrew does. So there isn't like Jeff Andrew doesn't have that authenticity edge that maybe he hoped to have there. Uh, Amy Kennedy has it as well. I mean, both of them have. You know, your, your, your typical South Jersey accent, which I know very well from having grown up not far from there. Um, and I think that, that goes a long way uh, to making the Kennedy name neither a, a positive or negative uh, in this race. Okay. Patrick Murray, director of the Monmouth University Poll, the gold standard of polls for New Jersey. Thank you very much. It, it is always a pleasure to talk to you. Same here, Dave. Thank you so much. Take care. You too.